Right, so this question <coughs> came for two marks in the December 2016 paper and in this question uh, it is stated that the expected number of uh, NMR spectral lines in 19F NMR including satellites for XGF5 is okay now when uh, so this concept I had missed out in my lectures and this is about satellite peaks okay so what a satellite peaks is when the abundance of a particular element is very low okay so what happens is for, for example first of all you need to understand two concepts over here first of all you have to know Vesper theory now in XGF5 so for XGF5 if you calculate the structure based on Vesper theory so it's XGF5 and a negative charge is there I have missed out in the question there's one negative charge right so there's a negative charge on the on the whole <coughs> on the central atom that is XZ right now XZ is uh, has eight valence electrons so five are participating in bonding so it has five bond pairs okay five bond pairs bond pairs five bond pairs right and uh, so if, if it's for forming five bonds so five bond pairs so five electrons are participating in bonding and there are three electrons left right plus one negative charge so total four electrons so then there are two lone pairs so five bond pairs and two lone pairs so the structure structure will be like this structure will be pentag pentagonal planar okay with the lone pairs on like this in on the along the z-axis right and all the fluorines along the xy axis so we have all the fluorines you know on equivalent distance i mean i may not be able to represent it correctly but all these fluorines five fluorines are at equal distance or you can say they are in the same environment right fifth fluorine i can draw somewhere over here these five fluorines are equidistant from one one another and they are lying in the same plane okay so that means these five fluorines are in in the same chemical environment so all these five fluorines are going to give only one single peak in the NMR right so if I draw the NMR so you'll, you'll see one single peak for this fluorine right but it is given that this is xenon now this xenon is also a very active is a active uh, is NMR active right and it has a natural abundance of 26% this particular isotope of xenon has a, a natural abundance of 26% okay so now this xenon this xenon is going to couple with couple is going to couple with hydrogen uh, sorry with, is going to couple with fluorine now when you see the proton NMR see in proton NMR the 13C 13C isotope the 13C carbon isotope is NMR active right but the abundance of this 13C NMR 13C uh, <coughs> carbon is very very low right that is why you in the proton NMR you do not see peaks of the carbon hydrogen coupling right but when you are doing the 13C NMR you have to use a decoupler in order to remove the carbon hydrogen couplings right so when you are observing the 13C NMR you you need to use a decoupler so that the carbon hydrogen couplings are not there because the proton in the in the in the 13 C NMR the hydrogen to which this these carbons are attached they are new NMR active and its abundance is very high around 99 percent right so those protons will couple couple with this carbon and the, the and the spectra will be very complicated that's why we need to use decoupler but when we are doing the proton NMR the abundance of this 13 C isotope is so low that it does not couple and we do not see any peaks because of the coupling of the 13 carb 13 C and the proton right now this xenon has the abundance of 26 percent now because of that what is going to happen is this xenon is going to couple with the fluorine because this abundance of 26 percent is quite high and once this xenon is going to couple with the uh, couple with the fluorine now if we see the if we see the coupling so xenon 126 right so that means it is <coughs> if we if we if we see the formula 2 ni plus 1 right this is the formula 2 ni plus 1 right and uh, n is given to be we will take it, take it to be equal to 1 right so 1 and 2 into 1 and spin is given half into half plus 1 right so this will be equal to 2 so it will sp split this fluorine uh, because of the coupling with xenon, we'll split it into two peaks, and we'll observe two peaks like this: one over here, and one over here. 
right and this will be in low of low intensity because the abundance is only 26% had it been 2.6% these peaks will would have been even smaller right so right now they are close to about uh, you know one one um, so there are about 26 percent of the uh, natural abundance so that's why these in these peaks are small in size right i mean not as as intense as the fluorine peak because fluorine has a lot of, have, has a very high abundance around 99 percent so that is why the uh, fluorine peak is going is is <coughs> is very very uh, large is very very intense whereas the coupling uh, due to the coupling <coughs> with the xenon the other two peaks that we observe as doublets they are quite uh, less intense so the expected number of 19f nmr spectral lines including satellites so one is this peak and there are two satellite peaks so the total becomes three right so the correct answer is three okay